And this Palm Sunday, as we begin our Holy Week journey to the cross and the resurrection of Jesus Christ, I'm glad you're here to worship with us. I hope that people in the back can hear me as well. We begin this week and this morning with a procession with palms. Hopefully everyone got a palm frond as they came in. Um, and our procession will be just from the narthex in. It's a little chilly outside, so um, if anyone would like to join me for the procession, you're welcome to join me in back where we will begin. Um, if not, I invite you to stand where you are in your, in your pews. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. The Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. After this, Jesus went on ahead, going up to Jerusalem. We had come near to Bethphage and Bethany, at the place called the Mount of Olives. He sent two of the disciples, saying, Go into the village ahead of you, and as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, Why are you untying it? Just say this, The Lord needs it. So those who were sent departed and found it as he had told them. As they were untying the colt, its owner asked them, Why are you untying the colt? They said, The Lord needs it. Then they brought it to Jesus. And after throwing their cloaks on the colt, they set Jesus on it. As he rode along, people kept spreading their cloaks on the road. Now as he was approaching the path down from the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to praise God joyfully with a loud voice for all the deeds of power that they had seen, saying, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest heaven. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to him, Teacher, order your disciples to stop. He answered, I tell you, if these were silent, the stones would shout out. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. We praise you, O God, for redeeming the world through your, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Today he entered the holy city in triumph and was proclaimed Messiah and King by those who spread garments and branches along his way. Bless these branches and those who carry them. Grant us grace to follow our Lord in the way of the cross so that joined to his death and resurrection we may enter into life with you through the same Jesus Christ who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We sing together all glory, laud, and honor as we enter. We'll just enter down the center aisle. If you're seated on the outer aisles, just kind of turn around the front and go into the, the outer aisles from the front. Um, or you may enter your pews as you go by on our front entrance. Let us go forth in peace. In the name of Christ. Amen. <laughs>
Palm Sunday is also Sunday of the Passion. We, an we anticipate that some people will not be able to journey through the entire six days before we join again to celebrate Jesus' resurrection. And to that end, we remind people of the story that will occur in this week so that when you come back next week to celebrate the resurrection, I think everyone knows what has happened prior. Nonetheless, we, we transition then this morning from our entrance with Psalms to our, our hearing of the Passion narrative. As we now enter into the contemplation of the Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ and meditate on the salvation of the world through his sufferings, death, burial, and resurrection, let us pray. Everlasting God, in your endless love for the human race, you sent our Lord Jesus Christ to take on our nature and to suffer death on the cross. In your mercy, enable us to share in his obedience to your will and in the glorious victory of his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for our musical offering. I am looking to see if Terry is here, who would be our reader this morning. Is there an alternative reader? Thank you, Becky, for our readings. Testament reading, the third of the four pro uh, servant songs in Isaiah speak of the servant's obedience in the midst of persecution. Though the servant has been variously understood as the prophet himself or as a remnant of faithful Israel, Christians have recognized the figure of Christ in these poems. In the second reading, Paul quotes from an early Christian hymn that describes Jesus' humble obedience in his incarnation as a human being, even to death and his exaltation and glory as Lord of all. We hear the word. The first reading is from Isaiah. 
The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher that I might know how to sustain the weary with a word. Morning by morning he wakens, wakens my ear to listen as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me, and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me. Therefore, I have not been disgraced. Therefore, I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me, who will, de who will declare me guilty. The word of the Lord. Uh, let's read Psalm 31 responsibly. Have mercy on me, O Lord, for I am in trouble. My eye is consumed with sorrow, and also my throat and my belly. I am the scorn of my enemies, a disgrace to my neighbors, a dismay to my acquaintances. When they see me in the street, they avoid me. For I have heard the whispering of the crowd. Fear is all around. They put their heads together against me. They plot to take my life. My times are in your hand. Rescue me from the hand of my enemies and from those who persecute me. The second reading is from Philippians. Let the same mind be in you that was in Jesus Christ, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equity with God but something as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The sermon on the Sunday of the Passion is, always serves as more of an introduction to the long Passion narrative. Um, the story speaks for itself, doesn't it? But I would, I would draw your attention to, to the second reading that, uh, that begins with the incarnation of Christ in, in a timeless time and being found in human form. We begin the story that we celebrate at Christmas. Someone noticed the, the wreaths on the doors this morning. Um, I took note of them last week as I was departing. And, and I thought, maybe it's appropriate that we have the reminder of Christmas, the wreaths on the outside of the doors, because that story in itself is not complete until we hear today's story and next week's story. The story of the baby born in the stable is incomplete until we hear today and next week. And the story today is a story of determination. And, and when I say the word determination, I, I think grit, and then, of course, I think John Wayne movies, true grit. And I've not seen the new one. I, it probably isn't as good. This is a story of God's determination to come to you. God's desire and willingness to go through all sorts of things to come.
come to you. And the things that God goes through begins with the incarnation. The God of the entire universe is born a vulnerable baby in Bethlehem at a time of great violence as we know about Herod's violence. And then some 30 years later, he gives himself into the hands of unjust judges, unjust forces, and goes to the cross. This is God's determination, God's great desire to be with you. And so this is our story. Because in it, God reaches out to us. And next week, we hear the great promises that God brings when he touches us. The Passion According to Luke. When the hour came, Jesus took his place at the table and the apostles with him. He said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he said, Take this and divide it among yourselves. For I tell you that from now on, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. Then he took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And he did the same with the cup after supper, saying, This cup that is poured out for you is the new covenant in my blood. But see, the one who betrays me is with me, and his hand is on the table. For the Son of Man is going as it has been determined, but woe to that one by whom he is betrayed. Then they began to ask one another, which one of them it could be who would do this? A dispute also rose among them as to which one of them was to be regarded as the greatest. But he said to them, The kings of the Gentiles lorded over them, and those in authority over them are called benefactors, but not so with you. Rather, the greatest among you must become like the youngest, and the leader like one who serves. For who is greater, the one who is at the table or the one who serves? Is it not the one at the table? But I am among you as one who serves. You are those who have stood by me in my trials, and I confer on you, just as my Father has conferred on me a kingdom, so that you may eat and drink at my table in the kingdom, and you will sit on thrones judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Simon, Simon, listen. Satan has demanded to sift all of you like wheat, but I have prayed for you that your own faith may not falter. And you, when once you have turned back, strengthen your brothers. And he said to him, Lord, I am ready to go with you to, to prison and to death. Jesus said, I tell you, Peter, the cock will not crow this day until you have denied me, denied three times that you know me. He said to them, when I sent you out without a purse, bag, or sandals, did you lack anything? They said, no, not a thing. He said to them, but now, the one who has a purse must take it, and likewise a bag. And the one who has no sword must sell his cloak and buy one. For I tell you, this scripture must be fulfilled in me. And he was counted among the lawless. And indeed, what is written about me is being fulfilled. They said, Lord, look, here are two swords. He replied, it is enough. We sing the first verse of hymn 343. We sing together.
came out and went, as was his custom, to the Mount of Olives. And the disciples followed him. When he reached the place, he said to them, Pray that you may not come into the time of trial. Then he withdrew from them about a stone's throw, knelt down and prayed, Father, if you are willing, remove this cup from me. Yet not my will, but yours be done. Then an angel from heaven appeared to him and gave him strength. In his anguish he prayed more earnestly, and his blood became like great drops of blood. His sweat became like great drops of blood falling down on the ground. And he got up from prayer. He came to the disciples and found them sleeping because of grief. He said to them, Why are you sleeping? Get up and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. While he was still speaking, suddenly a crowd came. The one called Judas, one of the twelve, was leading them. He approached Jesus to kiss him. But Jesus said to him, Judas, is it with a kiss that you are betraying the Son of Man? When those who were around him saw what was coming, they asked, Lord, should we strike with the sword? Then one of them struck the slave of the high priest and cut off his right ear. But Jesus said, No more of this. And he touched his ear and healed him. Then Jesus said to the chief priests, the officers of the temple police, and the elders who had come for him, Have you come out with swords and clubs as if I were a bandit? When I was with you day after day in the temple, you did not lay hands on me. But this is your hour and the power of darkness. We sing verse 2 of hymn 343. They seized him and led him away, bringing him into the high priest's house. But Peter was following at a distance. When they had kindled a fire in the middle of the courtyard and sat down together, Peter sat among them. Then a servant girl, seeing him in the firelight, stared at him and said, This man also was with him. But he denied it, saying, Woman, I do not know him. A little later, someone else, on seeing him, said, You also are one of them. But Peter said, Man, it is not I. Then, about an hour later, still another kept insisting, Surely this man also was with him, for he is a Galilean. But Peter said, Man, I do not know what you are talking about. At that moment, while he was still speaking, the cock crowed. The Lord turned and looked at Peter. Then Peter remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said to him, Before the cock crows today, you will deny me three times. And he went out and wept bitterly. Now the men who were holding Jesus began to mock him and beat him. They also blindfolded him and kept asking him, Prophesy, who is it that struck you? They kept heaping many other insults on him. When day came, the assembly of the elders of the people, both chief priests and scribes, gathered together. They brought him to their council. They said, If you are the Messiah, tell us. He replied, If I tell you, you will not believe. And if I question you, you will not answer. But from now on, the Son of Man will be seated at the right hand of the power of God. All of them asked, Are you then the Son of God? 
He said to them, You say that I am. Then they said, What further testimony do we need? We have heard it ourselves from his own lips. We sing verse 3. Then the assembly rose as a body and brought Jesus before Pilate. They began to accuse him, saying, We found this man perverting our nation, forbidding us to pay taxes to the emperor, and saying that he himself is the Messiah, a king. Then Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? He answered, You say so. Then Pilate said to the chief priests and the crowds, I find no basis for an accusation against this man. But they were insistent and said, He stirs up the people by teaching throughout all Judea, from Galilee where he began, even to this place. When Pilate heard this, he asked whether the man was a Galilean. And when he learned that he was under Herod's jurisdiction, he sent him off to Herod, who was himself in Jerusalem at that time. When Herod saw Jesus, he was very glad, for he had been wanting to see him for a long time, because he had heard about him and was hoping to see him perform some sign. He questioned him at some length, but Jesus gave him no answer. The chief priests and the scribes stood by, vehemently accusing him. Even Herod, with his soldiers, treated him with contempt and mocked him. Then he put an elegant robe on him and sent him back to Pilate. That same day, Herod and Pilate became friends with each other. Before this, they had been enemies. Pilate then called together the chief priests, the leaders, and the people and said to them, You have brought me this man as one who was perverting the people, and here I have examined him in your presence and have not found this man guilty of any of your charges against him. Neither has Herod, for he sent him back to us. Indeed, he has done nothing to deserve death. I will therefore have him flogged and release him. Then they all shouted out together, Away with this fellow, release Barabbas for us. This was a man who had been put in prison for an insurrection that had taken place in the city and for murder. Pilate, wanting to release Jesus, addressed them again, but they kept shouting, Crucify! Crucify him! A third time he said to them, Why? What evil has he done? I have found in him no ground for the sentence of death. I will therefore have him flogged and then release him. But they kept urgently demanding with loud shouts that he should be crucified, and their voices prevailed. So Pilate gave his verdict that the demand should be granted. He released the man they asked for, the one who had been put in prison for insurrection and murder. And he handed Jesus over to them as they wished. We sing verse 4.
As they led him away, they seized a man, Simon of Cyrene, who was coming from the country. And they laid the cross on him and made him carry it behind Jesus. A great number of the people followed him, and among them were women who were beating their breasts and wailing for him. But Jesus turned to them and said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. For the days are surely coming when they will say, Blessed are the barren, and the wombs that never bore, and the breasts that never nursed. Then they will begin to say to the mountains, Fall on us, and to the hills, cover us. For if they do this when the wood is green, what will happen when it is dry? Two others also, who were criminals, were led away to be put to death with him. When they came to the place that is called the skull, they crucified Jesus there with the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they cast lots to divide his clothing. And the people stood by watching. But the leaders scoffed at him, saying, He saved others. Let him save himself if he is the Messiah of God, his chosen one. The soldiers also mocked him, coming up and offering him sour wine and saying, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was also an inscription over him, This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who were hanged there kept deriding him and saying, Are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we indeed have been condemned justly, for we are getting what we deserve for our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. He replied, Truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. We sing verse 5. now about noon, and darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon, while the sun's light failed, and the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Then Jesus, crying with a loud voice, said, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. Having said this, he breathed his last. When the centurion saw what had taken place, he praised God and said, Certainly this man was innocent. And when all the crowds who had gathered there for the spectacle saw what had taken place, they returned home beating their breasts. But all his acquaintances, including the women who had followed him from Galilee, stood at a distance watching these things. Now, there was a good and righteous man named Joseph, who, though a member of the council, had not agreed to their plan and action. He came from the Jewish town of Arimathea, and he was waiting expectantly for the kingdom of God. This man went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then he took it down and wrapped it in a linen cloth and laid it in a rock-hewn tomb where no one had ever been laid. 
It was the day of preparation, and the Sabbath was beginning. The women who had come with him from Galilee followed, and they saw the tomb and how his body was laid. Then they returned and prepared spices and ointments. On the Sabbath they rested according to the commandments. We sing verse 6. call to return to the Lord. Let us join the whole people of God in prayer for those who cry out in pain and in hope. Be with all who wave palm branches and walk the road to the cross. For the mission of the gospel, where your church is forgotten, for disciples wrestling with betrayal, for all who seek the Lord, let us pray. Have mercy, O God. Renew the waters of the earth and restore us to right relationship with all creation. For cities and villages without access to clean water, for cities with an abundance, for floodlands and droughtlands, let us pray. Have mercy, O God. End human trafficking in every nation. For children taken from their families, for men and women without hope, for governments and nonprofits seeking resolutions. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. Comfort the afflicted. For those imprisoned, for those waiting on death row, for all overwhelmed by sorrow, and for all who live with disease, chronic pain, and anxiety in this world. We pray especially for Sue, the family of Brandon, Vicki, David, Dorothy, Mary, Bonnie, Judy, Ethel, Gordon, Bob, Carolyn, Frank, Carlene, Scott, Fran, Pat, Helena, Maddie, Arlene, Bill, Evelyn, Wayne, Barrett, Yvonne, Elaine, Karen, Tim, Tom, Diane, Betty, Annette, Phyllis, Jeff, George, Paul, Wynne, Connie, and those who name now silently or aloud. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. Enrich the children and youth of our congregation with an abundance of your spirit for each child in our community, for parents and guardians, for confirmation mentors and faith formation leaders. We give you thanks for your call to us through the waters of baptism and pray in thanksgiving for the anniversary of the baptism. Michael Huth, Kimberly Jacobson, Allison Pennycook, David Spurry, Nicole Humphrey, Kathleen Morikal, Dale Anderson, Melanie Schmidt, Mackenzie Castor, Jacob Myers, Erica Moe, Jessica Moe, Elizabeth Goodson, Lauren Hansen, Lucas Kettle, Ashton Keyes, Joshua Melu, Shirley Pennycook, Zachary DeWitt, and Jane Pennycook. For all these, let us pray. Have mercy, O God. Sustain the weary. For all who mourn, for all who yearn to be with you in paradise, 
for funeral home staff, for hospital chaplains and grief counselors. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. To you, O gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your boundless mercy through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Let us share Christ's peace with our brothers and sisters. Come over there. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. A couple of reminders as we prepare for communion. If you've not already done so, peace be with you. If you've not already done so, please fill in the welcome pad that's near the center aisle and pass it to those you're seated with. That's our record of attendance and communion for the day. Please know that all baptized Christians are welcome at the Lord's table with us this morning. We receive the offering and we sing our song.
Please stand and let us pray. God, our provider, you have not fed us with bread alone, but with words of grace and life. Bless us in these your gifts, which we receive from your bounty, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. You call your people to cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast, that renewed in the gift of baptism, we may come to the fullness of your grace. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the We give you thanks, Father, through Jesus Christ, your beloved Son, whom you sent in this end of the ages to save and redeem us and to proclaim to us your will. He is your word inseparable from you, through whom you created all things and in whom you take delight. He is your word sent from heaven to a virgin's womb. He there took on our nature and our lot and was shown forth as your Son, born of the Holy Spirit and of the Virgin Mary. He, our Lord Jesus, fulfilled all your will and won for your holy people. He stretched out his hands in suffering in order to free from suffering those who trust you. He is the one who has handed over to a death he freely accepted in order to destroy death, to break the bonds of the evil one, to crush hell underfoot, to give light to the righteous, to establish his covenant, and to show forth the resurrection. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering then his death and resurrection, we take this bread and cup, giving you thanks that you have made us worthy to stand before you and to serve you as your priestly people. Send your spirit upon these gifts of your church. Gather into one all who share this bread and wine. Fill us with your Holy Spirit to establish our faith and truth that we may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ, through whom all glory and honor are yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. All who thirst, all who hunger, come and be filled with the goodness of God. Thanks be to God. Please be seated.
Please stand and let us pray. Oh God, we thank you for gathering and feeding us. As a mother hen embraces her young, release us now to go on our way in these 40 days, ready to see our work as prayer, ready to fast from complacency, and ready to share with those in need through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. A couple of announcements for this morning. I'm here again this morning uh, representing the Evangelism and Worship Committee, encouraging any of you that would like to be on the prayer list for calling people in need of prayer um, to sign up on a sheet. Pat and I will be at the back of church. If you haven't had that opportunity, please see one of us and we'll put you on a list. It is um, the congregation's responsibility to call the church office and let us know if there's someone in need of prayer then we will contact our people on the list and they will pray for these people. So we encourage you, this is our privilege to be able to help someone else in this area. Thank you. Thank you. Thinking along evangelism lines, um, th there's some holiday happening next Sunday. Um, and so really the world does the advertising for us for evangelism on Easter and Christmas. I mean, it just happens, right? People get off work and there's all kinds of stuff in the world and you can't, it even shows up in your newspapers with all the sales of some kind. Consider this week who you might, to come, might invite to come to worship with you next Sunday. If there are neighbors or friends or relatives who've been disconnected or who might not have a congregation to connect with, next Sunday is the perfect and natural and easy day to invite people to come to worship. And I happen to know that there might be some food really nearby. Take it away. Thank you. <laughs> uh, this Sunday is the last Sunday for our tickets for Easter breakfast at a reduced price. I'd also like to remind those that have signed up for food donations, I will be here on Good Friday from 8 to 4. And I would like to have all food donations delivered then. So thank you, and we'll see you Easter Sunday. Thank you. Since this is the beginning of Holy Week, um, Thursday is our commemoration of the institution of the Lord's Supper. So in order to 
bring together what the Lord's Supper was to the Jewish people. Um, we're having a Seder downstairs. Everybody is invited. Um, it is like the celebration of the first night of Passover. So if you have the time, please come join us at 1030. Thank you. Good morning. I'm here to um, share an alternative giving to Easter lilies, um, another opportunity. Um, this year we chose World Vision, um, the Life Milk Project. Um, life milk is used in cases of emergency like drought and malnutrition, and right now World Vision is on the ground in about a half a dozen countries, including Ethiopia. Um, there were flyers in last week's um, bulletins, and there are some in the back table um, in the narthex. Um, life milk is a super nutritious food that is packed with vitamins and minerals um, that starving children need to regain strength and survive. It is a high energy therapeutic milk. It's easily digestible for even the most severely malnourished babies. Um, it is only given in cl clinics, and World Vision also brings water in to help um, mix the powder. Being in a drought, they have no water. So um, if you are moved to make a gift, I would ask you to do a couple things. Either fill out on the back of the white sheet your name and in honor or memory of, or put it on a bottle in the back and just leave it on the table. That way we can put your names in the bulletin insert as we do the Easter lilies. Um, and then also I wanted to share that a foundation grant was requested and approved for $500 toward this project as well. So if interested, there is information in the back or come and find me. Oh, and one last thing. Too many props. There's also cards in the back that you can take to give to a person um, that you're honoring this gift with. So thank you. Thank you. Good morning. Um, I don't know if there's any new visitors here today, but I just wanted to welcome everybody here to Palm Sunday, and especially to the visitors. Um, hope you come back again. I uh, um, just wanted to, uh, I'm Greg, by the way, I'm the council president. I wanted to uh, remind people that the directories are in, and they're in the back at the Welcome Center. If you had your picture taken, you are entitled to a directory. And if you would like a directory but didn't have your picture taken, we are asking for a $5 donation. We've got a few extras, and uh, any money that we get from those will go towards the roof fund. One last thing. Um, we, as a council, did not put there's a uh, people have been asking for a visitation pastor, and um, as a council, we did not put that on a budget on the budget because of our budget getting too high. So we are asking for anyone that's interested in a visitation pastor to um, make a separate donation towards that, and you can contact the church office. Uh, we are going to have envelopes made up for that specifically here soon. But in the meantime, if you would like to make a donation for the visitation pastor, um, we ask that you do that. And for our uh, viewers that are watching the service, this is a call to you also, um, because a visitation pastor is the person that would probably be visiting you, that uh, you can make a donation also to the church. And that's all I've got. Thank good. you. Very good. Thank you. Um, I'll just point out some of the uh, Holy Week worship services. We do not worship on Wednesday this week, but Thursday. Um, we will worship at 1.30 p.m. and 7 p.m. Thank you to the choir singing on Thursday evening. A good Friday at 12.10. Thank you to the musicians who are singing at 12.10 on Friday. Um, then we're back for worship on Easter Sunday, 9 a.m. So I think all the rest of the notes have been lifted up already, or you can read through those um, as they apply. Other announcements, other things to bring to our attention this morning? 
someone someone asked, how can how can we sing uh, joyful songs and, and be happy after hearing that somber story? Because we know the ending of the story, right? It, even though we go through Holy Week and we'll get to Good Friday and we'll, we'll contemplate Jesus' death on the cross, we know the end of the story. And so we're, we're at the same time remembering these sad things and filled with joy because we are God's people. I invite you to stand for our closing song. peace. Remember the poor. Thanks be to God.